Rodeo, some say, is the toughest sport around. As tough as the sport is, it is nowhere near as tough as the men and women who compete in it. Rodeo has a long history in Canada, but rodeo was not originally a sporting event, but rather a very important part of cattle ranching. I think Raymond, Alberta was the first basic rodeo. Um, stampedes as such were kind of a spontaneous thing. I mean, it was cowboys getting together at a ranch and, you know, showing how much better they were than their riding partner. And in the 1800s, they had a lot of those going on, but the actual, I think 1902, Raymond started, and then in 1903, they started charging an entry fee and having more than just the saddle bronc. They had steer decorating and they had the calf roping, which we now know as the tie-down roping. So every event kind of evolved from the ranch itself from a working ranch, that's what they needed to do. They needed to go out and do all these events other than bull riding. And I think bull riding started because we needed some glamour and pizzazz, the same with barrel racing. You know, those two events really had no place on the ranch, but they certainly are popular in rodeo today. Today's modern rodeo has evolved immensely from the type of events to the equipment used by today's cowboys and cowgirls. The bareback riggings have gone from having three separate handholds for either a left hand, right hand, or if you want a center grasp, to when you almost have to look at the two side by side to actually see the difference. Oh, look at this, Scott Graham. Some of today's competitors come in here and they just shake their head. You know, for example, Jake Vold here from Pinoca. He came in and, and he said there's no way he could have ever, you know, ridden in something like that. So it lends the discussion, if you will, between the old cowboys and today's cowboys on what was tougher. It's kind of like, was the six NHL teams better than the 30 or 40 we have today? So it makes for good conversation. And a lot of the tools that they use, a lot of the saddles and the bareback riggings and the bull ropes, they've evolved for safety. And so safety is one of the most important things. They never wore flak jackets back in the old days, and they never wore helmets. But today we tend to realize that, you know, head injuries are serious and we want our kids safe. So it kind of evolved that way. If you ever attend a rodeo, you're sure to find an event that will draw you in. Speed, action, glitz and glamour, rodeo has it all. He's ranked number three in Canada right now. Let's watch him. Gold up. Come on, Pinoca. Bareback riding is the most physically demanding event in rodeo. The cowboy, using only one arm, holds on to a leather handhold of the bareback rigging, which is cinched around the horse. The cowboy's arm absorbs most of the horse's power which puts an immense amount of tension on the rider's arm. Kyle Bowers and Kai Marshall are two of Canada's leading bareback riders. Kyle Bowers has been competing in professional rodeo for 15 years. He's qualified for the Canadian Finals Rodeo 11 times. The 40th Canadian Finals Rodeo will be his 12th time at the CFR. He's been a CFR champion five times and is qualified for the National Finals Rodeo in Las Vegas, Nevada, twice. You know, I've, like everybody else, I've been in rodeo my entire life. You know, I was born into a rodeo family and, and raised around rodeo. As far as riding professionally, I've been doing it for probably 15 years now. I've um, been riding bareback horses for, I don't know, 18 years now or so. And uh, just, I mean, it's just a wonderful lifestyle, you know. I mean, we get to travel all over North America and, and have fun and hang out with our friends, you know every weekend, if not every day during the summer. So it's just an amazing lifestyle. I love doing it. 
Kai Marshall is one of the young guns in the Canadian rodeo circuit. This year is his second season since turning pro, and it has been a successful one so far. Not only does he compete in bareback, but also in tie-down roping, which came naturally to him. The tie-down roping came kind of naturally because we put a lot of cattle out on pastures through the summer. We've got a few thousand head. So on Sundays, we would pack a lunch and we would check pastures. So the whole family would rope and we would have to treat on the pasture. And uh, so Kai just, you know, kind of fell into it naturally. And the kids used to have competitions who could be the first one to head it or both get both heels. So that was the roping part. From then, he just, we put some shoots in our arena and they started practicing the calf roping and Katie, our daughter, did the breakaway roping. From then, uh, the bareback riding came because his brother wanted to saddle bronc ride, so we put him in Davy Shields um, School and Skeeter Thurston down in Cochrane. And that was when he was in grade eight. And from then, he just took to it like a fly to glue. <laughs> Tie-down roping is the most technical event in rodeo. The cowboy must remain behind the barrier until the calf crosses the score line. If the cowboy breaks the barrier, it will add 10 seconds to his time. After roping the calf, the cowboy must run down his rope and throw the calf by hand. He must then tie three legs with a pigging string. The tie must hold for six seconds after the cowboy remounts his horse, and during that time, his rope must remain slack. I guess in high school rodeo I used to team rope too, but uh, I always wanted to do a rough stock, uh, rough stock event and I tried saddle bronc, but that didn't go so good. So I didn't want to ride bulls, so I picked bareback and kind of stuck with it. And calf roping, it's just kind of like roping out on the ranch. You just gotta rope his head and tie him up. By competing in bareback and tie down roping, Kai is an all around cowboy. In Canada, to be an all around cowboy, the cowboy must compete in one rough stock and one timed event. The all round, it's complicated sometimes. Most rodeos, it's actually bareback, then calf rope and next event. Even today it was. And it's just hard because you got your arm taped up and you got to have your horse ready. And to jump off a bareback horse and get on a calf roping horse, it's, it's hard. It's, you got to keep your mind focused and it's hard not to get distracted about things. And, but uh, you just got to. Do what you do and don't let anything bother you and keep a positive mind and you can get it done. Battle of the Buckle is brought to you by Alberta's Chiropractors. Battle of the Buckle is brought to you by Alberta's Chiropractors. Jacob Stemo is Canada's leading novice bareback rider and an upcoming open bareback rider. Jacob won the novice bareback championship in 2012 and is vying to clinch the championship in the 40th Canadian Finals Rodeo. I started competing in rodeo when I was 10 in the junior steer riding. Uh, I went to CPRA rodeos and uh, a few amateur rodeos in the FCA and LRA circuits. And uh, I got started in it. Uh, I grew up in Pinoca and my granddad was a bull rider and all my friends were, were rodeoing, so I just kind of joined along. My friend Clint Lay, when we were done steer riding, I was going to go ride bulls and he was going to go ride bareback horses and he wanted me to ride bareback horses with him. It took me a few years after him, but he finally got me convinced and I've uh, been riding for two years now. I don't think he learned to ride like that in Hobsky, Mexico. He knew how to do it. Novice bareback is similar to open bareback with the same mechanics and scoring, but the stock used is often new to the professional arena and is selected to complement the ability of the cowboy. In order to compete in the novice bareback, the cowboy must have turned 16 during the rodeo season and remain under 21 until the end of the season. Bull riding and ladies bell racing were not originally part of the rodeo of yesteryear, but rodeo needed some glitz and glamour. She's a giant champion, she can be a Strathmore champion. Ladies bell racing is the only ladies rodeo event. The rider must circle three barrels set in a cloverleaf pattern. The closer she circles the barrel, the better time she makes. 
The danger is in cutting too close and knocking down a barrel. An extra five seconds is added to the rider's time for each barrel that falls. The rider's time is started when she crosses an electric beam of light and the time is completed when she recrosses the beam after completing the pattern. A fast, well-trained horse is key to winning this event. Kirsty White is a veteran ladies barrel racer with many years of barrel racing under her belt, including being the 2012 Cowgirl of the Year. My parents were both um, heavily involved in the horse industry, and so it just was kind of the natural um, natural thing for me to do. Um, I've been riding since I was, since I, before I can even remember. Renee Leclerc is new to the professional rodeo circuit, but is trying to make her dreams come true and make it to the 40th Canadian Finals Rodeo. Renee has barrel racing in her blood, as her mum is a former barrel racer. I've been barrel racing for most of my life. I've been riding since I was little. My mom was a barrel racer, so she got me started. So I probably would say probably when I was 10, I was starting to get into the competitive bow racing. I picked bow racing because my mom was a bow racer back in the day. She went to lots of rodeos and watching her when I grew up bow racing, I knew that's something I wanted to do and I wanted to follow in her footsteps. Bull riding, one of the most popular events in rodeo and definitely the most dangerous. Bull riding requires a positive attitude from the cowboy as he faces and tests the nerves with a tough bull. A braided rope of varying width is wrapped loosely around the bull with a weighted cowbell hanging underneath, allowing the rope to fall free when the ride is completed. The rope has a woven handhold that is pulled tight around the rider's hand. During the ride, the cowboy must keep himself close to the handhold to prevent his arm from straightening and jerking his hand loose. The cowboy will be disqualified for failing to have a bell attached to his rope, touching the bull with his free hand, or bucking off before the end of an eight second ride. Once the cowboy is off the bull, he must depend on the bullfighters to distract the bull until he is safely out of the bull's range. Tanner Gerlitz and Tyler Thompson are two stars of bull riding in Canada. Tanner Gerlitz is currently placed in the number one spot, and Tyler Thompson is not too far behind in fourth. Tanner Gerlitz comes from a family of bull riders. His grandfather, Wilf, was a five-time Canadian champion. His father, Kevin, rode bulls, as well as uncles, Ray and Randy. Tanner already has one Canadian championship under his belt in 2006 at the CFR, and this year will be riding hard to add another championship to his family name. My grandfather rode bulls, he won Canada five times, and my dad and all my uncles rode bulls, and we actually raise bulls too. We go to the CFR here with some bulls, so uh, something that's always been in our family, and just, I grew up doing it, and I'll continue doing it for a while yet. I was 13, I started riding steers. I was kind of a late bloomer in the steer ride, everyone else kind of starts when they're nine or 10. I always played hockey, and then once I figured out I wasn't gonna be big enough, play hockey, I decided I'd get on a few and I haven't looked back since. That's been 15 years or so now. How about them bull fighters? They're Tyler Thompson, another seasoned bull rider, will be going head to head with Gerlitz at the 40th Canadian Finals Rodeo and will try to give him a run for his money. Tyler has previously held the Canadian Bull Riding Championship in 2008. Well, I'm a third generation cowboy. I kind of grew up around it. Um, I played lots of different sports and whatnot and uh, this is the one that I always fell back to and, and loved and, and it was the one I guess I was the best at. Rodeo pretty well has been my entire life. I've got everything I've got at home because of rodeo and I've worked really hard for it. It's been exactly what a professional sport should be and it's been my life and my job and I've been able to find some success doing it. As far as rodeo goes, it's, it's been my everything for, for a lot of years now. Battle of the Buckle is brought to you by Alberta's Chiropractors. Battle of the Buckle is brought to you by Alberta's Chiropractors. The 
rodeo season in Canada lasts approximately six months, which is a long season, but if played right, could be all a cowboy needs. Rodeo is a big part of my life. I, I look at it as uh, kind of like a business, just about, I still work at home on the farm, but all summer I'm practicing and done rodeo, and so it's kind of like a business in the summer. Being a rodeo athlete is no different from being any other professional athlete. Many people see these athletes as crazy for jumping on these bucking horses and bulls and holding on for dear life. But these athletes prepare and train for each and every ride. There's a lot of planning that goes into the careers of these cowboys. Strategies are built, goals are made, and the results show in every rodeo performance. My strategy is just to stay focused, stay positive, and do the same thing every time. Kai Marshall has been to the CFR once during his novice years and plans to return many times throughout his professional rodeo career. But this would not come without having his boots solidly placed on the ground. He has come up with some well laid out plans for himself in the upcoming years, but it all stems from the support he gets from his family. Well, his goals was to buy a place and he did that last year. He bought a quarter with a two year old house. So it's just half a mile down the road, and so he moved out, but not away, which is excellent. Uh, he was engaged a couple of weeks ago, so that's in his five-year plan, was to get married. He has his cow herd now, and that was in his plan. So he's actually achieving everything be before he set his goal, so he's striving very hard. For other cowboys like Kyle Bowers, the strategies and goals set forth are a little more personal and something he wants to do before his rodeo career ends. These seasoned guys like Kyle Bowers have been there and done that, but there's nothing like one more time. At my age now, they change obviously a little bit. In my younger years, my goals were to, you know, make qualify for Canadian finals, then my goals were to win Canadian championships, and then my goals were to, you know, qualify for the NFR or win the world and so on. You know, obviously, at this late stage of my career, probably winning the world is probably not that uh, realistic of a goal anymore. But my goal is still to win another, at least another one Canadian championship, and and I'd like to make the NFR again. For the ladies of barrel racing, speed is one of the most important factors in order to win and succeed. But being able to maneuver themselves and their horse around the barrels at such a fast pace puts forth many challenges. Some of the challenges in barrel racing, there's lots of competitive girls and lots of nice horses out there, so keeping up with those big girls, it's, it's extremely hard. I try to really clear my mind of all exterior thoughts or everything that's going on around me and just try and really, really get in the moment. And then um, I'm usually always riding young horses because I'm a trainer. You know, a lot of it's about just doing, playing their game, you know, like riding them to their, what, what needs to be done with them. It's not all about just, um, going fast for me. It's more about correctness and tidy runs. Being on the road for six or more months a year and competing almost every weekend puts a toll on the mind and the body of these rodeo athletes. They compete very hard and put their all into every ride, every run, every event because no matter what they say, they all would love to see themselves in the big arena at the CFR on Sunday in Edmonton, competing for that gold buckle. But getting there is a long and rough road with many bumps, bruises, and broken bones along the way. It takes a real professional athlete to put himself on a bucking bronc or bull and hang on for that wild and crazy eight second ride. There are many injuries that come their way and there's some fear behind that strong cowboy that you don't see from the stands, but it's a way of life for these men. I think uh, everyone's concerned on getting hurt. Like it's, it's part of the game. We all know it's gonna happen eventually. And I've been lucky now. I haven't really been hurt too bad ever. It's something that, you know, it, it's in the back of your head. You try to block it out, but uh, if you're not a little scared or a little worried about it, you're either plumb crazy or you're a liar. Yeah, I've been hurt, I mean, over and over again. I mean, we've been broken bones, torn ligaments, I mean, punctured lungs, I mean, what do you want? I mean, there's the long list of them, right? It never ends, you have an injury, basically every time you're getting on, there's something sore at least. When an accident happens and one of these cowboys gets hurt, not only are the fans watching, but there are many parents of these men in the stands 
and it is terrifying for them to see their son lying there and not know what is going on. There's been a few times that you try to erase from your memory where he has been seriously hurt and watching that as a parent is very difficult. Um, you just pray that he recovers well and you know gets into the therapy program. I've seen him knocked out and I've seen him severely hurt his wrist that he rides with that hand locks and side, you know what you just have to stay in the best physical condition that you can you have to work out and try and keep yourself healthy to overcome these problems and these challenges so that you can be the best athlete that you possibly can at each rodeo there's a sports medicine team there to provide assistance to the athletes before their events after their events, and most importantly, if an injury occurs, they will be the first on the scene to assess the injury and help the athletes out. We have a team of athletic therapists, chiropractors, and massage therapists. And so before the rodeo, about two hours before it starts, we help guys prepare for the rodeo. So if they're a little bit tight, they could get a massage. If they feel a little bit out, they could see the chiropractor. If they need a little help with taping or bracing, we can help them with that as well and just help them get prepared as best as they can to compete. Then during the rodeo, we are first line if something happens in the arena to help them out. And then after the rodeo, if they get a little banged up, we can help them you know, take care of that so that they can then go to the next one. The sports medicine team is an integral part of the rodeo, and without them, the rodeo and the athletes themselves wouldn't be able to function as seamlessly as they do. If you ask the Cowboys, they'll say, yes, we are. I think we are. It's a professional sport, and in any other professional sport, there's a team of medical staff to support the athletes, and we are that team for professional rodeo, and they are professional athletes, so they should have the same care as any other professional athlete, I think. Battle of the Buckle is brought to you by Alberta's Chiropractors. Battle of the Buckle is brought to you by Alberta's Chiropractors. It doesn't matter if you're a seasoned cowboy or cowgirl with many miles on the road and wins under your hat, or if you're just starting out in your rodeo career, the goals are all the same, to win and make it to the CFR. To me, winning is just not winning once, it's being able to win all year. Uh, if you can keep winning all throughout the whole year and ride most of your bulls, that's what winning means to me. The more bulls I ride, the more of a winner I feel like. The more consistent the guy stays, the more he wins, and the more you win, the more you should feel like a winner. That's it. Okay. Tanner Gerlitz, G-Man, he's number one in Canada right now. Franklin Armstrong, bovine division, G-Man, sit in the middle. Hook him on the outside. Let's do it. Oh, oh, the noise. oh, that's the kind of style that it put him top of the game in Canada to the tune of 22,000 Tanner Gerlitz. Boy, Jesse Byrne, are you on a roll today? Winning is why we do this, right? I mean, we're here to make money and make the finals and everything else. But at the same time, if you're just here to win, you know, you wouldn't survive very long. You have to, you have to love this right to your bone and, uh, and just know that there's nothing else for you. Winning an event and qualifying for the CFR is the ultimate goal for these athletes. But for the parents of these cowboys and cowgirls, Watching their child succeed is their ultimate goal. Carrie Lynn Marshall is a seasoned rodeo parent herself as she has had three children compete in professional rodeo. As parents, we're very proud that Ty is doing very well because he has a lot of will and determination to do what he's doing. We have family meetings and he has given us his goals, his five-year plan, where he wants to be and what he wants to do. And making the CFR is in that plan for him. So trying to make every rodeo in this whole circuit this summer is getting him to where he is today. And I couldn't be happier that he's achieving his goals. Sometimes a win is the best present a parent can receive, especially since they've helped mold their child into the athlete they are today. Some of my favorite memories 
just looking back when you started mutton busting and he won his first trophy, I mean, that was pretty exciting. And the first belt buckle he won, I remember that. And the last time I seen him receive a buckle was probably an awesome memory. It was my birthday and he said, Mom, I didn't get you anything yet today for your birthday. I said, the day's not over, Kai. I said, tonight we're going to Benalto and I'll be there to watch you. And uh, you win that rodeo from Mom and that'll be my present. He did. <laughs> Ty Marshall, our champion for 2013. What a beautiful buckle they always get here at the Nelto Pro Rodeo there. Tyrell Jensen, silver buckles, good to see. The win is the best about rodeo. If you win, it's you're on top of the world. It feels great. And uh, every guy out here is shooting for the win, so it makes it hard, but it's, it's the thing. With all the wins come some losses, and it is hard to lose, but no one is perfect. Losing can be a humbling experience for the cowboy. Well, you go back straight back to where you started. It, you, this sport is very humbling, and you, there's you got to take the highs with the highs and the lows with the lows, and and try and kind of stay somewhere in between. You can't you can't get too high on yourself because these bulls don't know what you did yesterday, and and you can't get too low either. Otherwise, your confidence won't be there to ride them great bulls. So, you got to kind of stay right in the middle, and that's just kind of how it goes. Calgary baby horse, look at that dude kick. Woo! You won. The Cowboys and Cowgirls are not the only athletes at the rodeo, but the animals themselves are professional athletes as well. For the rough stock events, the animal is competing against itself, trying to give the cowboy the toughest ride possible. For the timed events like tie-down roping and barrel racing, the cowboy or cowgirl and the horse work as a team. They work together to get the best possible score. The partnership between me and my horse is a lot. I work with her like every day of the week. I make sure she's good and ready, good in shape. I make sure she's feeling good and on top of the, her game. We just have a special bond and I really like her. I think a lot of that depends on how much pressure I do or do not put on them. I think you have to be so careful not to um, not to get clouded with the vision of you know fame and glory and, and just take one, one run at a time. There's a lot of competition in the rodeo events between the athlete and the animal and between each athlete. But even though this competition exists and each event is more of an individual sport, everyone works together as a team because without the help of the other athletes, the cowboys and cowgirls wouldn't get very far. No, it's just me and the bull and it's trying to keep myself uh, focused on my ride and I help out everyone and we're all great friends and you know, and at my wedding I had eight groomsmen and most of them rode bulls, so it's, uh, it's a pretty close-knit group of friends. And Like Dave Polson says, you don't see Tiger Woods carrying Phil Nicholson in his golf bag. Deep down, I'm competing against the other ladies, but I'm also competing against myself. I want to be perfect. I want to have the nicest runs. I want to be as best as I can be. And if I have flaws, I just got to try and clean it up and make a good run. Battle of the Buckle is brought to you by Alberta's Chiropractors. Battle of the Buckle is brought to you by Alberta's Chiropractors. There is more to the rodeo than just the guys and gals who compete in the events. There is the entertainment aspect of the rodeo, and the rodeo clowns are there to do just that. This is why I'm a good talent scout in the crowd right here. Check it out. Mm. Oh, no. Dakota. Some of the rodeo clowns out there are at the top of their game and are the best of the best. Ash Cooper, known best as Crash Cooper, and Dennis Halstead are two of the finest rodeo clowns around and have been involved in rodeo for quite some time. I started off as a bullfighter, which was the guy that protects the cowboys when the bull chases them. And then I like to think I got a lot smarter, and I progressed into being the entertainer. So, and I don't know, I started probably fighting bulls when I was 20. I played rugby and high caliber of hockey too, so once I realized I wasn't going any further than that, then I made the progression over into being an entertainer, in the, or fighting bulls, and then to being the rodeo clown, or the entertainer, which is, which is, uh, a lot more fun and a lot less dangerous. Not every rodeo clown starts off as a bullfighter, even though that is the natural way of becoming a rodeo clown. Dennis Halstead had a bit of a different start to his rodeo career. 
I'm gonna make these two, I'm gonna teach them a lesson. They'll never play with fire again. Oh boy. Actually, I have a very unique story. I was uh, I just retired from the Calgary Fire Department uh, last year after 30 years. Dennis, do you smell anything? I smell smoke. And about 15 years ago, they had a charity rodeo for children they put on every year. And uh, a week before the clown backed out, they need a rodeo clown. And that's how I started. And now I've been very fortunate. And basically, I've run in the States and Canada and run with the top 10 right now in the world. So I've been very lucky. The rodeo clowns do this job because they love it, just like the cowboys and cowgirls who compete in it every weekend. I love to entertain, I love being in front of a crowd and the excitement, so it's kind of just me. My favorite rodeo is always the next one. I always like to go see what's going to happen at the next rodeo and see, you know, when you deal with animals and crowds, you just never know what's going to happen every time. There's no script. And I think it's that unknown that I like so much and keeps me intrigued with it. Every rodeo has a rodeo clown entertaining. And these guys put in miles on the road just like anyone else competing in the rodeo circuit. It definitely takes a toll on their families as well. It's a big family. It's not, I mean, we're the only professional sport where you see somebody winning an event trying to help the next guy in the event. You just don't see that in professional sports. So the closeness and the uniqueness of our sport is not found anywhere else in the world in any other sport. That's the neat thing, it's a big family. Problem. My wife has an open airline ticket and stuff. She gets to fly in wherever and stuff, but I mean, it's a lot of traveling and that kind of stuff, so you really don't have a whole lot of home life because you pretty well live on the road. So that's why I drive the outfit that I do. That's my house right there. I have a two and a half year old and one that's a little bit over one right now, and they're just having the time of their life here in Pinocchio. We get to park and they get to play. You know, we go, it's almost camping for them. They get to play in the dirt with all their animals and then get to go to the rodeo every day, so they just absolutely love it. It's a little harder on mom and dad sometimes with the close quarters and having to get from one place to the other in a hurry, but uh, but they uh, they just love it. We're lucky that we have uh, kids that love what what we do, you know, So and it's a great profession in the fact that you can take your kids with you when you work. So a lot of people don't have that opportunity and I'm thankful for that. Battle of the Buckle is brought to you by Alberta's Chiropractors. Battle of the Buckle is brought to you by Alberta's Chiropractors. Family is an important aspect for the cowboys and cowgirls of rodeo. Without them, they wouldn't be able to compete at the high level that they do. These athletes put many miles on the road and are away from their homes and the ones that they love almost every weekend in the summer. When I was young, it was all fun and Danny jump in a truck and leave for six months, but now a guy goes for a few days and starts to get homesick and want to get back home. Now that I have a family and stuff, it's getting harder to leave home. It's getting more stressful at home, like we're getting some cows and stuff around now, and it's getting harder to leave home and leave Brittany in charge, and I know she can handle it, but at the same time, I feel as if I should be there, so it's harder and harder to leave home, but uh, she comes with me quite a bit, so it's, it's easy at the same time. She supports me 110% and everywhere I go. When I was younger, traveling was easy. It was just leave, and, and you love being on the road. All these new places you're going all over the world, it was, uh, it was exciting, and, and you couldn't wait to get home and tell all your friends where you'd been and what you'd done, but uh, I had a little girl here this year. and Even before she came along, it was getting hard to leave home, and, and I mean, it's the hardest thing I do anymore is to have to get in that truck and drive down my driveway, leaving my wife and daughter at home for the weekends. But I mean, once I'm on the road, it's the same old, same old, go to do your job and go to win. Like any other stressful job out there, your family's what keeps you going and is the glue that keeps things together. It's tough, you know, I mean, you definitely have to have a strong support group at home, and uh, you know, you have, to, you have to have somebody around that understands the rodeo lifestyle. Uh, it's, it's definitely not for the average person, um, but it's, uh, you know what, if everybody's, if everybody's on board, it's, it's great. Not only do the numerous events and time traveling on the road away from home take its toll on the athlete and their family. When they are younger and just starting their rodeo careers, their parents are the ones who are supporting them and getting them from event to event. The kids were all in the high school rodeo program. 
So uh, every weekend we were traveling around and from there they went into the college circuit. When they qualified for the national high school rodeo finals in the states, we were driving to New Mexico, Wyoming, our daughter had to go to Illinois. We had a baby Pete and a nice big trailer that their dad had got us to drive in because dad was here at home working. So we spent a lot of hours on the road together sharing a lot of good times and a lot of memories that we had together. Here comes Renee and she came to play and today... Traveling is really hard. It's it sucks being away from home, but it's good. My mom comes with me, so it's nice to have the family support. And uh, traveling, it, it gets tiring and all that, but it's fun and I love rodeoing, so I can't stop. Good evening. Oh, it is going to be some kind of fun tonight. Once they've grown up a little and have got their license, the road is freedom and adventure. You get independent. Um, you learn how to travel, and when, uh, when you're riding steers and whatnot, your parents are still driving for you. And, when you get your license, you, they kind of hand over the reins to you, and it uh, it's a lot of fun. I'll say that it's you know you got three of your best friends in a car with you for 36 out of a 48-hour weekend, and some stories could be told, but it's uh, it's just a lot of fun. It's like a vacation every week. Battle of the Buckle is brought to you by Alberta's Chiropractors. Is brought to you by Alberta's Chiropractors. Come on, let's ride this one, Chad Thompson. Like every athlete out there, one has to practice a lot and make sure their body is in top shape in order to be able to perform at their best. Lots of gym time. Any of the downtime, especially in the winter months when you're not riding every day of the week or every weekend. I spend a lot of time in the gym doing a lot of different exercises. There's nothing really body specific that you train for bull riding. It's just an overall good workout. The harder you are, the quicker you are, the better you'll ride. Not only do these guys work out in the gym, but they also have their regular jobs to maintain. For most of them, working on their farm is their job and their everyday duties they perform are their practice and preparation for their rodeo event. In the off season, he works at home. <laughs> He works every day here at the feedlot and at the ranch for us. Um, pasture checking, feedlot checking, everything is done on horse through the day, hauling grain. He works full time for us and uh, he's also a rodeo coach at the Olds College and he he's constantly working out as he's just doing his working every day for us as well. Congratulations, CFR, on 40 years of great rodeo. Congratulations to the CFR on their 40th anniversary. Congratulations on 40 years. Good luck to all the girls and everyone. Have great runs and run hard. And we want to congratulate the CFR on 40 years and thank you for the amazing support of the Canadian Pro Rodeo Sport Medicine team and our ability to keep cowboys healthy. Congratulations Edmonton on 40 years.